All right. Hello, Aiden. This is a hello. Uh, interview. <laughs> hello, hello. But yeah, I was uh, meaning to get you on, talk, uh, talk shop, talk, talk everything else, and um, pretty much, I don't know, just really get into you. People get to know you. This is, I mean, we, we're going to wing it. We're going to we're going to talk about like, anything and everything, and essentially, um, yeah, I mean. Uh, let's let me do something for a sec. All right. If, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, so let me, okay. All right. So what, you know, like being in this industry that you're in at the moment, you're in design, you're in the game industry, essentially, right. What what is the what's your um you know where 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 are you going with everything? What what's your like your your thing your niche at the moment? I guess um is it it's not much game work at the moment, is it? Or design mainly folks on work design uh, movies things like that. Um yeah, that's a that's a load of questions. Like, where do I want to go with all this? Mm. I want to go towards uh complete freedom do yeah. whatever i like and um that requires a lot of work and um, that's what i'm focused on focusing on at the moment and in terms of like my industry activities i'm not really into games at the moment or film mm. maybe the occasional project um but lately i've been working on real life projects um industrial uh, medical military etc yeah yeah. I mean, it seems like that, that stuff would always command more, more um, money. And it's something I think a lot of people would like to get to, because let's be honest, the game industry is kind of capped. So was the movie industry. So moving up in say, if you're a designer, you're capped, essentially. You're, you're, it seems to be the way I, I had a chat today with somebody and um, they're working at a, a company down the road here. And the company made a hundred million dollars, right? And they got told, right? It's isn't there Fruit Ninja? Have you heard of that? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like um, they and the guy, the guy goes to him, "You're not going to make more than eighty grand a year," even though the people there built that company to make a hundred million, right? Mm -hmm. Like revenue or profit? Re this is a profit. Oh, net profit. I think so. It was reported. Well, that's I mean, there's a big difference, obviously, but still, that's a lot of money, man. And yeah. um, I think the disgrace uh, that the piece, the very people who who made the game possible are getting neglected like that. And you know what? Um, there's two coin. There's two sides to the coin. It is like badly negotiated on the front end by the artists. They should have like covered themselves for like uh, back end bonuses and et cetera. And uh, even that can be difficult because they can easily say like, no, we're not going to do that. Like either take this or, or leave it. Mm. So um, I, I get it. It's, it's not as easy as it, as it is to say, um, but that's a bad story, man. hundred million in profit and, uh, and 80 K a year. That's uh, that's a shame, you know? Yeah. Like capping it, getting capped. And mm -hmm. the, the boss is like, they would kind of like tell people you're not any, even in groups you're not going to make more than 80 grand. Like even if the company performed really well, it's disgusting. It's because it's just like the greed, absolute greed of these people. And you're gonna, right. you're, this, this is out of, it's like, really? I mean, it's, why would you be capped with a company growing? It's like, you're growing the well, company, you should grow with it. Hmm. I guess, I guess, I mean, we, we don't know what's going on there. You know, it's easy to judge uh, based on a couple of headlines and some articles, but um, um, without proper inside knowledge, it's hard to judge and draw conclusions. Mm -hmm. So I'll refrain from that. But I mean, yeah, you would say that if a company does that well, you would expect some kind of performance bonus or like, a, you know what I mean? Or like stock yeah. option, whatever. So yeah. I hope that they can get it. That would be, that would be respectable, but we'll see, man. We'll see. Yeah. And uh, like to get back to your work, are you still, cause I, I know you have some Photoshop uh, work with 2d photo manipulation yeah. work. 
drawing yeah. work. Do you do much of that for clients these days? Never, ever, never, <laughs> never ever. I, 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 I never do Photoshop for clients or, uh, or, or drawing. I, yeah. and also I don't want to, man. I mean, when I feel like it, I'll, I'll maybe find work that requires such thing, but, mm. um, I'm not really into that. I like 3d and I like making good renders and presentations and, and focusing on what can be achieved in real life and not uh, present scribbles. I'll scribble for myself. I'm releasing a book um, that I'm drawing for um, big volume of drawings that I have to do. And I haven't drawn in a long time and it's uh, absolutely refreshing to take my new knowledge and uh, design knowledge into 2d drawing again. So that is something I'm interested about, but you see that is a personal endeavor and, and nothing to do with clients. So yeah, I, I won't, I won't do that for clients. Yeah. I mean, that's what I was thinking doing, doing a book also. And it's great. I, mo great motivation when mm -hmm. you sit down and you have work that you haven't shown. Yeah. And you can just release it. It's uh, there's something to, um, you know, when you release work, it's kind of like it takes the uh, motivation out of finishing it or finishing a work at a higher quality because you get your kudos and that's like, it's, um, I'm not sure if you know anything about like getting deep work done or, um, what do you mean uh, deep? deep work in the sense that when you, when you sit and you force yourself to sit, right. And you're not rewarding yourself with other things. You're not, um, you know, it's like, you know, when people, going um they're distracted and like okay well the thing is if you can hold off the reward so when you post work online it's like rewarding to get likes and comments and all that stuff oh, right the instant gratification yeah like so mm -hmm. pulling back from that instant gratification actually you get much more reward pulling right. back and holding out longer mm. it's, it's kind of like releasing game projects too soon it's like no, it's different, but you, you lose all the magic. You know, people, it, it's better to spend longer on something, build it up, hype it up, and then you, then you release it. So, I mean, that's essentially, you know, it's like keeping that thing to yourself and working on it. I think it would right. be a yeah, much better thing. But um, so yeah, I remember you worked on Mother. I actually also did something for Mother. You did the robot, right? Yeah, the military droid that you can see outside in the grid. Um, yeah, I did like a, I did a mother version as well with like the heat padding and stuff. Um, and then um, uh, Weta Workshop ended up creating a uh, design that was closer to, um, well, I mean closer, almost directly, uh, Christian Pierce's. Um, and I think that is amazing because there's a nice distinction between military and the mother. Um, so I'm very happy with uh, with the results. Uh, did they they didn't use your mother one. That's all right. They didn't use your one. The, well, I think if you, I think if you go to my art station and you go to my other I am mother posts, you can see like a very beefy version. Um, yeah, like uh, bottom right, you can see the the yellow heat pad. Um, yeah, no, like, below one, one below, and then yep. one to the left. That one. So they, this was my interpretation of the of the mother with the heat padding and stuff, and the mm -hmm. and the sheathing and. Um, yeah, I delivered the three D, et cetera, to the to the VFX houses, and um, yeah, like I wasn't involved in the creation of the of the physical suit, so I guess uh, Weta had their good reasons to pursue the other design of Christian Pierce. Uh, but I'm I'm totally cool with it, you know. At least I have these renders to show, and that's all that's all good with me. They look like they took some something from yours. I thought it actually was yours, one for one. It looked like it. But um, yeah, no, it's. I mean, it's all. Oh, that's all. That's all Christian Pierce, and he deserves uh, all the credit for that. Yeah, I, I, did my, I, did, I did my 3D version. They used it for the military droids, and uh, I'm super yeah. happy with that. Yeah, that's cool. So yeah. this one, this is the. Which one's that? that's the military droid? I was just looking this at the military. yeah military yeah. version. Yeah. Yeah, 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 this yeah. was this was pretty much in the movie. I haven't yeah. seen it yet, so. Yeah, it's a shame that it was such a short scene, you know. Uh, but it was a low budget movie, so I guess I understand. But I will, I would have loved to see them like more in action, etc. Yeah, it's never. I mean, things never get time, like time and 
just to see it and analyze it. And, yeah. But look, it's like, it's like a lot of things that you think you work so hard on and it's boom, quick, done, it's all over. I yeah. guess that's the, yeah, I guess that's how it goes. Um, well, depending on what project you work on, you know, you might end up getting a design that gets a lot of screen time. That's amazing, you know, mm -hmm. so um, it depends on the project, I would say. Yeah. So this is all CAD. There's no sub D on this. Um, yeah, there's, there's some sub D like I used um, Maya for like the cables in the neck and uh, yeah. maybe a couple of things here and there, like the, the sheathing and the padding on the mother version um, is done in Maya as well. So there's a little sub D, but not much. It's like 99% mm -hmm. CAD. Yeah. No, that's cool, man. I like how um, well you get your fillets and uh mm. You've done that one off. Um, your fillets and uh, Moe. It's it's hard to get that to always work the way you want. Yeah, Moe. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. How do you how do you battle with that? Um, well, after a while, if you learn how Moe works and like what it takes and what it doesn't take, mm. you kind of learn to work around it. Um, so, for example, let's say you make a cut that goes through a panel line. Um, and it's like coming very close to that panel line, the bevel will only go up until the line and not through it. Otherwise it crashes or like it doesn't compute. So mm. then what I do is I make sure that the panel lines in the first place are positioned in, in, in a way where I can make the bevels that I like. And if that doesn't work, or if I really want that particular shape, I'll try to figure out a different solution or um, um, brute forcing my way through it by manually networking. Um, but that rarely happens. So I'm pretty happy with uh, the, the stability of Moy and what I can do or not. So do, you, do sometimes you just leave it just cause I, I've seen Vitaly work with some things. He just leaves it. Just yeah, definitely. Especially when I have to do like micro bevels, if I know it's going to take a lot of time and it's going to add like unnecessary amount of polys because a bevel takes a lot of polys, especially if you uh, export it in high fidelity, mm -hmm. um, every like little curve needs like a ton of uh, um, bevels and like a lot of polys to make it smooth. So mm -hmm. what I do is I leave it unbeveled and then in key shot, I apply the, um, the edge radius. All right. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's a good way to cheat. And also it's nice because if you have a very uh, major close up, you can apply that bevel um, with the algorithm in key shot. And then when you zoom out and you, and you're not supposed to catch any highlights on that little edge, you can turn it off and mm -hmm. uh, that looks much better. So you can control it um, yeah. whenever you need. So I like that workflow. Yeah. What about clients asking for the bevel? Will they, yeah, well, I guess they wouldn't care. I, I never have clients ask for bevels. And um, um, if they would, I would tell them not to ask me <laughs> or something. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Well, I mean, you, it, it, have it really you, depends. Have you ever thought about like chucking into Fusion and just beveling it? Like adding it to the fillet or? Well, it does work. Uh, I mean, you could yeah, like. You can throw anything at fusion. It'll just like force mm. its way through. And I really like that, mm. but I'm like, man, I don't enjoy the, the saving of the part, the exporting of the part, the importing, and then doing like your little, little bevel that no one cares about. And then putting it back. I'm like, <laughs> I, move, I like to move forward, man. So yeah, it's, it, it, it's true. Like if you think about it, like if we look, like you've got like most fillets and stuff like that. Everything. I mean, do you have one, do you have ones where you're like, damn, I just couldn't get that to like, to fill it. Like, do you have anything that bugged you in certain areas? Say this one. Mm, yeah. You can see a couple of artifacts. Like you see near the near edges, you see like little lines on the belly. For example, you got the two buttons. You see those little lines. These, that's, yeah. yeah, that's from the uh, from the key shot algorithm from the radius um, slider, mm. and um, because it'll bevel anything over thirty degrees, and you can uh, change the degrees. And I think back then, I didn't know the amount of degrees um, it would take or wouldn't take, and sometimes it doesn't work at all, mm. no matter 
it don't matter the degrees you set it to. And then I'm just like, well, I don't, I don't care. I'm just going to post it, you know? Like, yeah. So this, I assume this didn't have that little filler. Well, it, it did, it did, but it created the little artifact because I've applied the bevel, but like in the original file, it doesn't have a bevel. Oh, so this one here where I'm, I'm kind of hiding around. Yeah. So it's a, it's a sharp Got file. It. And, um, and, and I also have parts where I do have bevels and then no bevels on other parts. So it's like a combination of like what I feel like doing. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. And it, it does take time. It's like going in there and adding all that stuff. It's, it's, it's well, I, well, it's not like I go, I finish a model with no bevels and then go back to add all the bevels. I, I do it like, in the moment when I'm creating that little detail or part, mm. I just apply it's just an, um, it's just a habit to bevel everything. And I just like, I, I love how you can see all the highlights, um, like, especially in the dark middle uh, yeah. section mm. with no bevels. It wouldn't look like that. You know, this, are you talking about even stuff like this? Exactly. Exactly. That's all beveled, man. And yeah, um, you've actually, if, if, yeah, if I didn't, yeah, if I didn't bevel them, it wouldn't look like that. It would be like one big dark blob. Yeah. Even though in real life, there are no CG sharp corners. Like you yeah. take a microscope to a knife and it's not sharp, you know? Yeah. It's, what um, catches it's just the... a very little radius. Mm. Yeah. So like, is this a, would that have been beveled around the holes? I mean, you would. Yeah, I, I did that. Yeah. Yeah. You're about to get bevels there. Yeah. I think most of the stuff you're approaching it in a way where, I mean, you can see it here that's the yep. so is, are you saying there's no bevel around here then the cut could be i i don't remember actually but i think it's a chamfer to be honest i think it's a chamfer, chamfer yeah. and then i applied the little radius uh on like each separate yeah uh edge yeah 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 i get you it seems like it would be able to take most of what you you would chuck at it this type of shape mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. um yeah yeah it's it is i really like this one by the way Thanks, man. Yeah. And do you use sub D for the, the body? Yeah. So I created like a very basic quick blob uh, that represents a torso. And I just chucked it into Moy and I cut away everything that didn't need to be there. And I created the torso panels and I created the structure inside. And um, that is how I, how I dealt with the, with the torso shape. That's cool, man. Yeah. Just some mm -hmm. sub D for, um, for the kind of the, what is that? Like the flexible materials there. This yeah, it's like, um, I mean, it doesn't look like that anymore. Um, mm -hmm. But that's supposed to be like some kind of sheathing for the for the torso and all the uh, like the core. Um, yeah, I thought it looked. I really like um, this. It does definitely reminds me of uh, your drawings. This type of stuff. Yeah, yeah, I think I think actually I created this droid first. And then when I did that sketch, I implemented those uh, details into the sketch. So it's like the other way around. People would say like, oh, it looks like the drawing, but it's actually <laughs> the yeah. other way around. Yeah. Yeah, it, that's what happens, man. 3D inspires 2D. Uh, that, you know, essentially. For sure. Yeah. yeah. And vice versa. You can go back and forth between them. Mm. But um, yeah, like the renders look really nice. I mean, considering their key shot, they look mm -hmm. great. And Thanks, uh, no, it's something I want to see you finish. You're going to finish more of it? Yeah, so this is only the chassis, and I worked on it a little more, and I just didn't have really time to do it. Sometimes <laughs> I just don't have the energy to, or like the interest to, to pursue something, and so it just sits there. And, dude, I created this thing like three years ago or something. It's like yeah. you know, such a long time ago. Long time ago. Uh, but I really, want to, I really want to finish it, and I will hopefully this year. and. Uh, release like proper uh, full body shots and create a new benchmark for robotic design for myself. Yeah, man, it's always it's always that holy grail is to get a finished uh, full full design done. It's mm. tough, isn't it? It's tough to finish full designs. People don't realize the it's a lot of a lot of work, and a lot of parts, you know, a lot of thinking. It's just uh, you're constantly having the problem solve. You know how do thing how do, how does things connect? How things look aesthetically pleasing. Yep. Um, like this one's nice. I like this. Oh, thanks. This is cool. I like the feet. I like what you did with it. It's, yeah, this one is more abstract. Pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. I was gonna say it's simple and effective. This is mm. yeah. This is what I was um 
going on about. I didn't realize the render's so big. That's nice. It's good to see you do. Is it render this big or I've just scaled yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, I did a big one, dude. Oh, nice. <laughs> Yeah. And did you render like, is it like, have you got bevels on this with key shot and on the gun? Is no, it... I think I, I did not apply the technique here. Like I yeah. only found out about it pretty late, which uh, sounds mm. super stupid. Um, yeah. So everything you see here, it's like as it is. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. It's nice and readable. It's effective. And um, it says, it says a lot about your design style, which you know, readability is so important. And I think people aren't really focusing on readability. Mm. Like it's taking a back seat and less is more oftentimes than mm. adding more. And they think uh, this is where you get, well, you're doing that. And so I think that's great. So is it, it definitely stands out. Thanks, man. Yeah. I really like these, these shapes here. Yeah, I don't. You don't that's like this one well dude i i just don't um i'm looking at it now and i'm like i can do better there is um yeah like looking at it now and you, you know let me tell you something uh which is the truth mike and uh, i exported that back plate and i published the project even even though i wasn't satisfied with that back portion mm. and uh yeah, it's, it's, I mean, yeah, it's funny. I, I don't really like it. I mean, I'm not saying it's ugly, but that plate just like uh, deserves a different treatment. Like, are you talking maybe, about this, this one here? No, no, I'm talking about like the back, the back cap. Yeah, that one. Uh, this, that yes. one, the circuit, circuit cylinder. I don't know, man. I think you might be overthinking it, overanalyzing your own work as a tendency, uh, as artist, every artist does, as every human being does for everything they ever assess in their whole life. I think you're probably overanalyzing. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not saying it's like an ugly piece, but what I do know is I know the truth, and that is that I exported this project even though I knew I wasn't satisfied with it, mm. but I knew that it could look better. Um, and I don't have that with a lot of other parts on this design, but that was like one in particular. I knew I wasn't satisfied with. So when I hear you say, oh, you like it, I'm like, oh, that's interesting. So um, yeah. I, mean, I think maybe overthinking, just thinking that I think it looks like a nice engineered part, to be honest, has like a reinforced part. It's almost like mm -hmm. a part that you see on an engine where uh, there might be some pressure in there and that has mm -hmm. to have a rod of some kind and um, right. that structure would in, in, reinforce it from maybe mm -hmm. blowing out and injuring someone. So I'm just like summarizing. I mean, it makes sense. It mm. makes sense. But you know, like that can also like those same, the, the, the same attributes you, um, you describe can be applied in a, in a better way, even like mm. e even, even more aesthetically pleasing, even mm. with, with more balance, with more respect for shapes and transitions. But, um, I mean, maybe that's something I'll uh, revisit, um, another time now that I'm thinking about it, you know, I get all like mm. worked up. Like, <laughs> I don't think, yeah, I don't think you have to revisit it, man. I think um, if if time has passed, you leave it. It's like just a little, it's just a little cap, man. It takes like half an hour while you make it again, and boom. Yeah, but then you have to re-render the whole thing. You have to go through it. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's gonna suck. Rendering sucks, man. You gotta then you gotta be happy with the rendering, the lighting, and the, the post effects, and it's um yeah, but uh, no, that's cool, man. Like. With, um, so I guess you definitely have that. You're not, you, you don't have a, you know how a lot of people start just modeling guns and doing guns and kind of that. Um, you're not just doing that, which is great to see you doing. And when you do guns, they look like cool guns. You know, like they're not, I guess when I, when I see a lot of people do guns, they're just, I don't know. You've got you got class. I like it. Is oh, that thanks, man. That's really yeah, kind. yeah, if that makes sense. Like I like the see through. Uh, oh, right. Like it just thanks. you're you're um essentially thinking. I don't know. It, there's some um there's some more dynamic way of the way you're approaching things, which it I it's good to see because 
I don't know. Are you are you referencing much weaponry, or are you at that point where you know how you get to the point you can just start making weapons and start going for it? And you do you like to break your normal convention of thinking and how you approach things? Hmm. Yeah, that's a couple of questions. Um, well, I, I was never really a fan of looking at reference mm. because especially not other artists because I feel like they um, influence in a way. Well, I mean, it's dangerous. It's like um, coming close to the fire. You know, you, you might, I need to break that down a bit uh, on a, in a better way. Basically what happens is when I was starting out, I really loved a lot of artists and I was looking at them and I saw things which I loved that I tried to implement, but I didn't succeed in ext um, extracting like a pure element that I could transform into something my own. I, I grabbed the wrong things, which in, which in turn impregnated their style into my work. Mm. And that's something you don't want. Um, mm. And when you get better, you learn to see what exactly you like in a, in a different design. And you know how to identify, hey, what exactly is that thing you like? So you know how to extract more precisely and know how to apply it in your own work, um, respecting your own style and the other artists. Um, but the best thing is to look at real life. So I really love studying real life, uh, looking at videos on YouTube, reading about things, technologies uh, in whatever field they may be, medical, industrial, um, transportation, et cetera, et cetera, and learn about solutions which are proven and work. And when you extrapolate on that knowledge and cross-reference from different industries, you can come up with unique design solutions that are um, um, interesting and that you connect it yourself by making your own um, connections in the brain, forming solutions. So that is what I love doing. And I love understanding things on a fundamental way in a fundamental scale so that I never have to look at a reference again. You know what I mean? So for example, if you, if you want to figure out, if you want to figure out how, how a piston or hydraulic works, you can go to an artist who uses them a lot and whether they're accurate or not, you can see that they're a piston. And then you're just taking that from them. Mm. So your understanding is not fundamental. Mm. You don't know what kind of pistons there are. You don't know how they're powered. You don't know what kind of gimbals or like um, um, joints they have. How do they attach? From what material are they built? Do you have different pistons that handle different pressures? Uh, what are like the, the, the use cases for these products? And if you don't have that knowledge, you will never know like what you're doing truly. So doing all that research about a particular subject that you know you're going to use in your own work that allows you to crystallize the knowledge you've gained um, implementing that in your own work and knowing what you actually did and for what reasons dude once you've done that you don't have to look at reference ever again mm -hmm. until like some new type of technology emerges in the piston world you know what i mean yeah. so i am a fan of understanding the world um, quenching my uh, infinite thirst for design and research and curiosity. Mm. Um, and, and that's why I'm not really a big fan of looking at reference because if you have to do a test, Mike, um, and you look at a cheat sheet, did you learn anything? You might get the right answer, but you ain't learning shit. Mm. So what I like to do is learning stuff, understanding the subject, and you can pass the test with, with, with ease, you know? So that's my philosophy on, on reference. Mm. And I also have one screen, so I don't like, um, I like using the real estate for, for my stuff and not like some Google page, you know? You don't have two screens. You don't use no, I work on one screen. How come? Cause I like it. <laughs> <laughs> really? Dude. Yeah. Like I can, I worked with multiple screens before and uh, there's just something about it that I don't like. It's like, like fucking traffic controller, you know? <laughs> yeah. I I like to, look, I have to say, I really don't use my left screen as much as this screen. Yeah. You have a dominant one. Yeah. Just for dumping shit on. 
And it's like, dude, I would say, let's be realistic. 80% of the time, we're not using that screen. 80%. Dude, yes. Yeah. It's great. And for what? It I mean, crazy. yeah. if I have to write an email, I'll check it on my iPhone or I like pop it up. It's, it's really no big issue. I never missed it. Um, and I just don't like having the Google image search or like open to, mm -hmm. to constantly look and look and look. I'm like, you can better read for an hour, know about the subject matter, and you can close the tab forever. Because if you have like some type of normal functioning brain, especially if it's a sub subject that interests you, you'll automatically be inclined to remember that and apply it. And the more often you apply it, the, the more ingrained it'll become, the, the more permanent these connections are in the brain. Mm. So that is my philosophy. I really don't, I never really looked at reference directly. Yeah. And I find, but, but what do you think of my answer? Like the whole research thing? I mean, do you agree with that? Even like when I'm, if I have a reference, I look at it for maybe five minutes and I'm done. There's something about it. You, you're done. It's like you've taken it, you've absorbed it, and then you just look at it, you study it. And it's, it's very much that what you're talking about. And also, like, when you're working on the one screen, to, I tend to just put it on top of where I am so I can directly reference. So I'm not, like, looking at it here and then going to there. And I'm having to do why, that. Why, though? Because I it, like I find a direct reference at the top of my screen to my model a lot better. No, but I mean, like, why why do you look at the reference constantly? I'm not looking at the reference constantly. This is if I need the reference. Mm, like, okay, I so get like, it. Yeah, yeah. If if I need it, like it's a, a like let's say I did a reference for Spider Man, and it had mm -hmm. all these line work on it. I couldn't remember it because it's like so. It's all over. I, I can. I like I'm looking at it, I'm like, I'm not going to remember that. So I just oh, like, I get it. yeah. So like, it's pretty rare that that happens. Um, but yeah, it, it you really come to think of it. I would only think that you would need it if you're streaming, you need multiple screens. Uh, if you're doing set, so, uh, God, you actually don't need a second screen as much as you think. And that's the problem. Like you do buy one unless you're streaming and you know, have a job which you're constantly running two screens but yeah i think you do tend to leave it you're, you're right there's a uh, merit in you know, what you said and um yeah no I, I i do agree with you on that but um yeah talk, let's uh i guess people i don't know people have seen your website i like to always uh i don't know see, Did see, they? let's let's check it out all right. I mean, let's get a look at okay. the actual website. I mean, I always thought this is the ballsy thing that you don't see many people do. What did you say? Ballsy? Why? Ballsy. ballsy. Well, ballsy. think about it. You're, um, I think people, I mean, you're quoting, you're quoting your prices on your website, which is, I think it's, people will consider ballsy, but, um, well, who else has, I mean, I've seen consultants quotes on their website and it's like 20 grand for a month and mm. just don't see any artists doing it. Right. And this is what right. you're doing. I mean, this would be, I, I, th I think you're, you're setting an industry standard. If that makes sense. I hope so. Yeah. It would be nice. And, um, I'm married, I, I did that, uh, freelance rates video, things like that to get people up to date. You always hear about what about people working in these like countries where you know even two hundred bucks a day is fantastic, mm. but I, it's just it's it's I don't know if you think about it if you can charge the USD right why not charge it or if you can charge a better rate why not charge it it's 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 well. It's really, if you let things, if you let people tell you, you know how, you know how you talk about and people tell you, you should charge this, you should do this, or you should work on this. And you know, when you're working, you're doing what you know is right for you. Yes. Right? And when you listen to others and they tell you crap and you go over, you go over that kind of like, 
I should, should I listen to this person? Do they know what they're talking about? And mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty much what you're doing is that you're listening to yourself and like, it's commendable because you're, you make it work. Right. And that's what yeah. I think. That's why I think, I think that should happen with people. I think people need to pretty much do that. And you know, you can see your day rate, you're stating things and this pretty much gets all the minutia, you know, the crap that people come to you and they go, Hey, you know, can I do this job? And then we just, you know, they, it'll come out to, no, I can't, yeah, I can't afford you. And you've wasted, I don't know, half a day on this stupid thing. And right. So like, I respect you doing that. And it's great. Oh, to thanks. See. Yeah. Uh, it's great to see that. And it also gives people, gives people confidence and like hey you you're charging that much well how much can i charge and who mm. gives a shit where you live who cares right well yeah well clients will try to use that against you if they see you you live in a cheap country they'll be like hey but you know what about what about your mm. standard of living it's, it's very cheap so we thought we could come and lowball you and disrespect you and i was like i get it you know company wants to make a profit and that's totally acceptable. And I get it. You know, it's ultimately, um, you know, they're not holding a gun to your head to say yes to our shitty rates. It's the, it's the individual himself or herself who is agreeing to the terms. So I don't have any, um, well, it's not like I don't have any sympathy, but I'm like, don't say yes to something. And then like, um, uh, bitch about like the, 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 the bad living you're making, mm. you, you are in control and you also have, you know, people who live in Western countries who go to like Thailand, whatever, because it's so cheap there. And they, you know, they have a nice living and their standard obviously raised tremendously because of the different standards and they get to chill and live like a King because uh, they, they, they could have never have lived like that in a Western country. So, you know, it goes both ways and yeah, man, like if, let, if I would live in a country where it's like super cheap, mm. I would be so happy <laughs> because you can charge international rates and, yeah. um, and live in a cheap country. And that's why I think people who live in a country where it's cheap and, and charge cheap is, I don't know if I agree with that, but it's also not in my position to judge so fast because I don't know what led, what led them to make that decision and um, what situation they were in. So I try to stay um, somewhat understanding. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, you got to feed yourself, you got to feed your kids. And if you have them, whatever, your dog, that's important. So I, I get it, but I mean, man, I don't, I didn't come to this planet to, to, to win a race to the bottom. I want to, I play to win. I don't play to not lose. Yeah. I, I was talking to people in, uh, in those countries where it costs them nothing. And they're like, but that's what people charge. Like it's what it's, it's conditioned. You it's know? ingrained in the mind. And um, that is ultimately a prison. You can't touch smell or see, you know what I mean? So they did that to themselves and it's ultimately up to them to change their, their conditions through actionable steps and actually materialize uh, their own vision by taking the, 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 the steps in real life, whether that is um, producing better quality work, which in turn allows you to charge more, uh, command more respect and more demand for your work which allows you to charge more dude it's a free market and you can do whatever you like dude i can try and uh, charge a million dollars a year tomorrow and see if it works if it does wouldn't that be great dude like the free market decides no one else there's no culture there's no standard it is all in your head it all means nothing dude like companies and governments these are all um concepts created from nothing that we adhere to um, and it's interesting to see how much power they exert um, onto onto the onto the populace. So mm. it's like, be cognizant of that. You're just obeying a standard which doesn't exist, except in your mind. You know, animals don't see it. 
Mm. Um, nothing is there. You know what I mean? So you are the one to, 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 to change things for yourself, to work for a currency that also is meaningless, that doesn't mean anything. But we decided that we can exchange um, physical services, et cetera, for like this BS currency that's not even backed by gold, et cetera. So it's like, it's interesting what we're even doing on this face of the earth. But um, dude, like you gotta know and, and then play according to that game to win. You know what I mean? Yeah, look, I, I'm, I'm loving what you said because it is a perception and it's like musicians at one point would get, like a musician gets paid millions and millions of dollars to, to do well, a song. And not everyone, good not ones. Everyone. The thing is, the ones that have been smart, like you could, you could, you could actually say there's a smart musicians and there's dumb musicians, just like there's dumb artists that in the 3D industry and smart ones. And right. just being a good negotiator and being a good businessman will command you more money because you're assessing yourself intelligently for the time that you give and you're smart with how you're, you're quoting your clients. You, a client can smell you if you're desperate, right? Yeah. Very true. Mm, they can smell Very you. True. Even if it's through an email, they know, right? Yeah. They'll know. And so is, there's a, uh, there's a certain psychology. Like I've, I've kind of like been in that thing where, okay, this client has money, they'll pay. And they did pay. And it's, it's, it's very much that. It's, but then you know, oh, no, this client doesn't have money. They're not going to, like, they won't, right? And just, it, it will, you, you, you sometimes just go, yeah, I'm going to tell them. And you realize that they, they can't pay it. And it's right. just, that's why you've done all that and put it on your website because you get that. You do get it and, it's, and then it's like that. You're, you're distracted by all these things coming in and you need to get cull the distractions in your day and be more focused and all that. So mm -hmm. I can see why you've done it. And I think with pretty much that, that what you touched on is, um, yeah, like people in the US, they'll make US dollars and say they're working over the internet, they'll go move to Thailand and live like a king. But the people yes. who are living already in those countries don't feel that they can break out of the mental prison that they're in. And for all of just being a simple mental prison doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's a mental prison, right? Yeah. You yeah. Can just like, so. hey, push out of it. That's what I think, yeah. But you're right. No, you're on the you're spot on the money, right? Because it is just a mental prison. If a person in the US can go and move to Thailand and make the same US dollars and not be confined to now I make whatever they deal with, what are the Thai dollars? Like, I don't know what their, 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 their dollar is. Uh, but they'd be like, well, I have to get paid less now because I'm living in Thailand. They don't go through that transition. They just keep charging the same thing and their living standard goes up astronomically. So... And people living in Russia don't feel that, or Russia or wherever, don't feel that it's possible to have that mentality because they're just stuck, stuck in that rhythm. And I think a lot of people get, so I had a chat with someone, they work at, I think People Can Fly or something like that. And um, they have like Americans going there. You know what the Americans do? Mm. They take the same shitty pay as everyone else. <laughs> I'm just like, that's dumb. Yeah. 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 It's dumb. Why would you go and move to these countries? I know that, but the thing is, it's like, it sounds dumb, but it sounds logical at the same time. Cause oh, you, you can live really well there, but why wouldn't you just like stay in the States and you probably make more money? I mean, well, dude, I mean, that is also something up to everyone personally, you know, not everyone needs to be an entrepreneur, not everyone needs to be a multimillionaire, you know, people have different aspirations, different visions uh, for their life. And that is completely respectable. I absolutely like, you know, like live uh, and let live, I believe. Mm. And um, I think to automatically assume that because a market has bad pricing, whether that is through the direct actions of all the uh, artists collectively charging low and therefore lowering the industry standard, would I, would I blame every one of them? 
No, I don't think so. I think ultimately whether an, a standard is low, which is in your favor or not, it is your own responsibility to turn mm. that around mm. and, um, and fulfill your own vision to the standard that you are satisfied with. And if that means charging more uh, and backing that up with quality, obviously, that is your prerogative. And I think that is amazing. And um, I, I love that the world is free to do whatever you like in a sense that Hey, if you want to build a big company, you are free to do so. Um, if you can manage the resources and the talent and, um, and the manifestation of materializing such a company, that is absolutely amazing. And if you want to live under a bridge, you are also free to do so. Mm. So I would say like, it's not, I wouldn't necessarily preach like, oh my God, all these artists are stupid and they're charging so little. I'm like, hey man, they're in control of their own life. They know people can charge more. They know they're not stupid. And, yeah. Yeah. and yet, they, and yet they remain complacent yet. They remain stagnant. And that is completely fine, man. Mm. I don't, I don't decide what other people do with their life, but mm. I decide what I do. And I decide I'm not satisfied with the standard and I want to increase it. I want it to go up. So I will do whatever I can to do that for myself. And if I have peers and like-minded people who have the same aspirations that in, 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 in turn fuels you even more to achieve. And um, it's a positive feedback loop. And I think that's also why it's so important to really um, be careful who is your circle mm. because you are the average of five people. And um, if, you, if you hang out with, with five criminals, you'll be the sixth. And if you hang out with five great dudes, you'll also probably be a great dude, you know? So that is what I think. And um, and that's why I'm happy to have this conversation, Mike. I mean, we, we talk off air a lot as well and, uh, and, you know, about these kinds of things. And I think it's great that you also are trying to uh, increase the quality of your life and uh, also to move forward and to climb. And that is a very respectable thing to do. And I love that, you know, so happy to be here. Yeah. I mean, the, the thing that you said is that you surround yourself with people who you want to essentially like if you know if you have criminals you want to be a criminal right it'll so, probably happen yeah um if you have that type of you, you can surround yourself with that's what the internet offers you right you can surround yourself with people because i consider mm -hmm. you a friend so i'm surrounding myself with good company in the sense that i think people often i would say in like real life they think you know, this is all I can surround myself with. You know, I think a lot of people have that type of mentality. It's like, all right, who's around me? All right, there's people from school, people from work. It's not true. You can talk to anyone. It doesn't We're matter. We're connected. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, I mean, I can't like touch you or smell you or whatever, but still, there's a connection of where we can uh, learn from each other. And I think people are underestimating that and setting, setting yourself free in such a way where you put yourself out there, ask questions. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's the saying like, there's no dumb questions. There's only, um, uh, I can't remember, there's a, there a good quote, take quote to it, but um, there's, there's one that extends that out more. But if, if it's like going towards that, when people are, you know when the people are fearful, they, they, they have that fear. And then they're like, it's kind of like if you had a little jump, right? And you knew that you might not possibly make it, but you could make it. It's just that you got to jump. And it's, it's kind of like, as the saying goes, the net, if you jump, the net will appear. Mm -hmm. Like you're doing that essentially, right? And just, you're like, oh, the net is here, you know, <laughs> like, because it's, you're backing it up. You're backing it up with your momentum to push yourself and then also be caught by the net because you know that you're confident that um, essentially you have to put yourself out there and find out. And we had like that, we had that online ch uh, chat before where you quoted a certain amount of dollars and you knew like, well, let's see what they're made of. Uh, let's see what we can get because you didn't want to work with them anyway. And you thought maybe they, they were going to pay you and all that stuff. And they had like that miscommunication, but it's, it's kind of like, you're 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 trying things because you know what your worth is and you wouldn't want to work with a company if you're if they're not going to pay you your worth right so 
this absolutely is, yeah and that's yeah. what you what you're doing yeah so i mean you you have you have the power of saying no and by the way like everything i'm saying i learned this through life not from not only from personal experience but also from listening to to, to people smarter than i am uh, people who have way more experience than i have in certain fields and um so I think that is great because learning is amazing and you can, you can grow and uh, it's a continual process, but basically you have the power of saying no and you have the power to say what you want, you know, because if a company is reaching out to you, it's not like the small artist versus the big evil corporation, mm -hmm. dude, like uh, even a company as big as Apple, it's just a collection of people. Do company means people together, man. So, and, and, and their responsibility is to create a profitable company for their shareholders. And that is the, the core reason a company exists in the first place, whether that is a one team, uh, one man show or a uh, multi thousand dollar uh, conglomerate, you want to, create a profit because what are you going to do with it? You're going to grow. You're going to, you're going to be more wealthy, create wealth, create assets, become um, um, a better version of yourself and create a better quality of life for you and your family and friends, whatever. And I think that is an amazing things to do, amazing thing to do. So I don't understand people who hate capitalism in the first place. I think it's great. And um, also with that, even though it's a company, it's not like, what they're putting up in front of you and um, they can be like, take it or leave it. But that's BS. If they come to you in the first place, they're coming to you for a reason. They want something from you. Mm -hmm. And what do they have in return? They have a bunch of thank you notes in return. Dude, money is just thank you notes. Like the, the bigger the favor you, 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 you perform for them, the, the more they'll thank you. And um, the less risk you give them. So if you take away all the risk, the more they're willing to pay for that. So if they know like, Hey, we're coming to Mike for this design mm -hmm. and we know he's going to nail it out of the park. Dude, they're willing to spend a lot of money on that because they know what they're going to get. And that is quality assurance mm -hmm. and, and the experience of working together with you. And that is worth so much. So it's never the case of, Oh my God, they're so big and um, this is the contract they gave me and everything that's in here is against me. It doesn't uh, have any regard for the interests that I have, the interests that I want to protect, uh, portfolio clauses. Dude, like your work is dependent on people seeing it. So why would you sign something that buries or buries your work in eternity for mm -hmm. no one to see it? You can change these conditions. And the negotiation table is the place where everything happens, not after you signed it. If you signed it, you have to be committed to your job and provide a good service. Mm. But before that, you have the power to ask for more, to negotiate terms, payment plans, do like, fuck the net 30 payment thing. Like, that's so ridiculous. You don't walk into a restaurant, eat a pizza, and then tell the, tell the, tell the guy like, hey, I'll come back in a month with the with 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 money, you know? It sounds utterly ridiculous. And these crazy um, um, excuses like, yeah, we have payment cycles here and there. Like, yo, that's BS. You can, you can tell them like, hey, I want to have like this amount of money deposited in my bank before I lift a finger. And then we can start working together. You can choose to do that. And you have a 50-50 chance that they, that they are gonna, going to say yes. So what I want to stress again to people is you never get what you deserve. Mm. You get what you negotiate mm. and, and there is a big difference in those words. So ask for what you want, ask, because if you never ask, they'll never going to give it to you just like that out of thin air. You have to claim what you like. And uh, if you, if you grow a pair of balls and you, and you dare to, to, to express your interests and feelings, they'll respect you way more for it. You can tell them like, hey, these are my conditions to work with me, whether that is having portfolio rights after or having like a certain amount of money deposited before you even start working. Mm. You can tell them that and then you can go from there because I bet you that they'll tell you what they want to see and they don't have any emotions behind it and you should leave emotion off the table.
This is about business and you want to create something that is good for you and good for the company. Mm. No one is saying it needs to be a win for the company only. If it's not a win-win for you as well, uh, you have to walk away from the deal, I believe. So I know that was a, a, a mouthful, but that's yeah. just what I was thinking. Amazing. Great. That's because uh, I mean, artists are very emotional, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you, you seem like you're very emotion collected with the way you're presenting yourself and but most people are not right they aren't they get they they get emotional they think this is yeah they really want this job um i mean you know how some people are like oh, i really want this job it's going to give me exposure blah 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 it would be great to work for this company mm -hmm. and they're thinking about how great it would be for exposure that they haven't got yet right the game might not come out. The movie might not come out, right? So they're thinking about things later on the line which haven't materialized, and they're already giving up their negotiation power. So that, weird. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's like unless it's like a project you you truly believe in in a different way. You're you 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 have a a love for. I don't know, someone approached you to do RoboCop and you always loved RoboCop and you're like, I want to do RoboCop. I want to have the next RoboCop. Then you're going to be like, going, you're going to negotiate differently and maybe perhaps you'll, you'll give up some emotions to that. But that, that, that's a rarity that will ever happen in most instances when you're working. It is that very much a business deal and people aren't thinking like that. It's not a business deal. Like they don't think that. They think it's like this, it's a business deal straight up. These people can possibly right make millions of dollars from whatever they're going to sell. And you need a piece of the pie, but people aren't yeah. looking at it like that. Yeah. They're just looking at it. It's like, I'm a checkout. It's like you're a checkout chick doing the work and you're just swiping down things. It's almost like people have degraded themselves to that, to that level, but they don't realize if you spent 20 years building your skills, that's 20 years of knowledge. And it's like, um, what is it, uh, Picasso? Is it either Picasso or one of the artists? Um, uh, you know, he drew. He used to draw all the abstract artwork. And um, I think when he was really young, he used to draw, I can't remember his name. If I said it, you would know it. Um, he, he used to, he had a woman approach him. And he's been doing this. His, his um, work is worth, you know, hundreds and thousands of dollars. And he drew like it on a napkin. And the woman asked, can you draw oh, me yeah. a sketch? Yeah. You know, they go, what's his name? I forgot the name, but I know the story. Yeah, and is it Pablo? Uh, no, uh, Pablo. Um, well, I mean Pablo Picasso. That's his name. Pablo, but yeah. do you mean Picasso? I don't know. Yeah, Picasso. It's probably Picasso. And so he drew a sketch, and the woman's like, you know, um, like how how much is it? And he's like ten thousand dollars. And she's like, what? It took you five minutes. And he's like, well, what about all the years I spent honing my craft to to produce that? Right. So. That's how artists need to value themselves. And they're not looking like, they're not looking at themselves like that. So that's like anything, like an actor will get paid more money for doing the same job. Yes. Like he's done it from, he or she has done it for more years. That's the same thing of what you're doing. You, you should be paid more because you've been doing the business longer. You know how to make things, you, you're not, you're much more mature. You should be being paid for that time and effort that you put all mm. those years like otherwise it's redundant it's it, you you make yourself start off as i you're it's like telling that story you're capping yourselves mm. Like, mm. if he capped himself and it's like well he, i mean he'll cap himself well i mean he's working it out and he's like well it's maybe worth you know fifty dollars and that's it's stupid right because right it's his life force that's been put into it. And it's like yeah. that training and that, why are you doing this then? You're training every day you wake up and you do a piece of artwork, that's training. You're an accumulation of skill, which is valuable and that's value, so. I agree. Yeah. But um, man, it's uh, like, you always have good things to say about that and you always, you always put uh, a great spin on it and huh. understand I'm it. Happy. I'm happy you think so, man. And you could probably write some articles somewhere. I think it would be valuable if you did write an article of sorts. So even if you, even if you did your own YouTube, because um, mm. you have a YouTube channel, 
I think we would Correct. love for you to talk about, you know, how your mindset works and how you're valuing things and putting value on things. I think your, your insight is, is something that people would love. And um, we all have to lift up each other. I find and right. People aren't, you know, people don't do it enough and um, knowledge is power essentially. Right. Yeah. hundred percent. At the end of the day. So, but I mean, you can have a head full of knowledge, but if you don't execute, it's worthless. So, um, I mean, that's a, that's an important caveat. You know, you have to do it. You mm -hmm. have to execute. You can read books all day. You can be the most talented guy. And if you lay in bed all day, nothing is going to happen, dude. I mean, you have to materialize things in the world, mm -hmm. uh, to, to, to get any further. And if you don't, and if you party all day, and if you, um, don't take things seriously, and if you don't, pursue things like with a serious effort until they fail. Um, nothing will, nothing will uh, blossom out of that, man. You have to really put in the work. Um, and a lot of people might say like, man, I worked all my life and nothing happened. And dude, that can very well happen. Yeah. Dude, it could happen. Maybe, maybe in, in two years I'm homeless. Who knows? Dude, I don't know. But uh, will I let that stop me from, from going back up? Hell no. Mm -hmm. So um, it is also important to be resilient and to be steadfast and to never give up and to be like a fucking cockroach, man. Like no matter what happens, no matter what nuclear bomb goes off, you need to go back up and, and, and fucking go on, you know? Mm -hmm. You need to be tough. And that, is, and that goes for anything. So even, even though you might, focus your channel on industry artists and concept guys, et cetera. I think this message applies to everyone in life and not only, um, and, and doesn't limit itself to this profession. So dude, I, I agree with the, with your message. And I hope that, um, um, it has been inspiring uh, for people and motivating for people. And I hope that my words have done the same and, um, dude, I, I agree. And I always enjoy uh, yeah. talking with you, man. Yeah. Shall we uh, leave it there on that note? Because I think that's a fantastic note. I think that's good. Yeah, we can always come back later, but uh, that's, that's good for now. All right. And that was Aiden. And, yeah, I hope that, uh, you guys enjoyed that. And um, people can check, go check you out. I'll put you in the link description. You guys can like and subscribe if you like this stuff. And I'll uh, keep on doing it. All right, guys. I'll see everyone later. Bye-bye.